All right, I'm going to read to you Ezra, or not Ezra, Nehemiah chapter 13, and how proving to you that God condemns, strongly condemns, miscegenation, also known as interracial marriage. Let me show you that. Nehemiah chapter 13, I'm going to read the whole thing. On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Notice how it says forever, not just a temporary type of thing. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and water, and with water, but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. Howbeit our God turned a cur the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass, when they heard, when they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And before this, Elisha the priest, uh, having the oversight of the chamber of the house, or of the house of our God, was allied with Tobiah. Hope I'm saying these names right. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings and frankincense and the vessels and, tith and the tithes of the corn, the new wine and the oil which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time I was, was not I at Jerusalem, for in two and thirteenth year of Xerxes, I hope I'm saying that right, the king of Babylon came. I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king, and I came to Jerusalem and understood all the evil that Elisha did for to Toba, Tobiah, again, hope I'm saying that right, in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God, and it grieved me, oops, went down a bit, and it grieved me sore, therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber, then I commanded that they and they cleansed the chamber, and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God, with the meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers uh, that did the work had were fled every one into his field. Then I then contended I with the rulers, and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together, and set them in their place, and then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn, and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries, and made the treasure, treasurers treasurers over the treasuries, Selamiah, again, not not good at pronouncing some of these names, uh, the priest, and Zadok the, the scribe, and the Levi, and of the Levites, Padiah, and next to them was Hanan the son of Zechur, the son of Methaniah, uh, for they were for they were kind of faithful, and their office was to distribute uh, distribute unto their brethren. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds, for I have done for my house of my God, and for the offices thereof. Kind of good thing proving dispensational salvation. Wipe not away my good deeds. You know, be saying to God, don't like take, they don't like just wipe away my holiness. You know, to these people who say that salvation's always been the same in every dispensation, got to kick at that right there. In those days, I saw Judah some, or saw in Judah some trending wine pa wine presses. On Sabbath, on the Sabbath, and bringing the she sleeve sheaves again, not good at reading some of the stuff, and lading asses, and also and also as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, and I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt the men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all, and all manner of where, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing is this you do, and profane the Sabbath day? And profane, yeah, and profane the Sabbath day. Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon the city? Yet yet ye bring more, more, more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Then it came the past that when the gates of Jerusalem began to dark before the Sabbath, or began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should shut and, and charge that they should not open until after this, or should not be open until after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set eye at the gates that there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So all the merchants, here's where it really gets good in terms of like condemning miscegenation. So all the merchants and sellers of all kind of a lodge without Jerusalem once or twice, that I testified against them, and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? Uh, if you do so again, I will lay my hands upon you, or lay hands upon you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, 
and that they should keep uh, keep come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O God, or O my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. In those days, us also saw I the saw I Jews. Look at this: that married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and Moab, or Ammon of Moab. So they're mixing with the other kindreds. And their children spank half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people, or of each people. And I, content, I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not, look at this, ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters uh, unto your sons, for, for, or for yourselves. He's condemning miscegenation. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him. Look at sin by these things. It's a sin. No king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause him to sin. Shall we hearken unto you that are you to do you're to, you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God by marrying to transgress against our God by marrying strange wives? And and one of the sons of Jodiah, jo, Jodiah, Jodiah, I hope I'm saying that right. Son of Elishab, the high priest, and the son of or the son-in-law to Sanballat and Haranite. Therefore I chased them from me or chased him from me. Remember them, O God, because they have defiled the priesthood. They're defiling it, and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. Thus I cleansed them from all strangers, and appointed the wards. Of the priests and the Levites, every one in his business, and for the wood offering at times I appointed, or at times appointed, and for the first fruits, remember me, O God, for or my God, for good. I mean that right there is a condemnation of miscegenation. Marrying strange wives, did they not sin by doing these things? You know, I mean they're taking strange wives. You know, a, a Moabite, Ammonite, whatever, should not come into the congregation of God. That he's condemning miscegenation. All these these. Christians who support miscegenation, what do you do with that passage? The whole chapter of Nehemiah 13 just condemns it. So don't be deceived by all this pro-miscegenation garbage. I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I do believe that Christians ought to support laws against miscegenation, and I think miscegenation should be illegal. So uh, don't be deceived by all this. And, and by the way, one last, one last thing I want to point out. Why is Hollywood and the media and, and the world promoting miscegenation so much? If it's not some wicked sin, why, are the, why is the media, why is the world promoting it? Because it is a sin. Because the world is at love the world is at is enmity with God. You know, Satan is the god of this world. So, don't be deceived by all this pro-miscegenation, you know, insanity. God bless you. Goodbye.